James Stewart has cashed in on his slots, winning every moto since the young phenoms returned. Three championship hopefuls now turn their attention toward the second half of the season in hopes of landing a big payday. Who will be the winner of the 2003 AMA jackpot? Let's keep the slots rolling for the second half of the 2003 AMA 125 Motocross Championship. And welcome to New Berlin, New York for the 2003 AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championship. And welcome to round number seven from Unadilla Valley Sports Center for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Todd Harris along with the founder and editor-in-chief of Racer X, Davey Coombs and Cameron Steele, David Bailey, injured in a go-kart incident, but he will be back. An amazing story. More on that a little later on. There are the AMA U.S. Motocross point standings in the 125. It's Brown, Langston, and Hughes. And James Bubba Stewart is looming on the horizon, winning everything in sight since his return from that Supercross accident. And we talked to the big three about Bubba. Basically, the points, it's like Bubba doesn't really matter to me right now, you know. Uh, for me, getting second behind him is as good as a win. So, you know, his speed is, is, is real good at the moment. So, you know, he's, he's the guy to beat, obviously. But, you know, as long as I keep finishing on the podium, I'm going to be happy. And, you know, as long as I head of Brown, that's the most important thing right now. From now on out, you know, just run as close as I can to Bubba. You know, he's riding really good and he's going fast. And, you know, the only thing I can do is try to beat him and just stay with him, you know, and, um, you know, not let him get as many points. and beat Langston and Hughes. If I finish top three every moto like I was before, before I got hurt, he won't catch me. Um, if I ride like I did last weekend, like a complete idiot, then yeah, he will catch me. But, uh, you know, like I say, there's, I can't control what he does. I, the only thing I can do control is what Ryan Hughes does, and I just got to try 100%. And if I give that and he, I finish ahead of him, cool. If he beats me, that's life, you know, and that's the only thing I can do. Well, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how those guys go at motor number one, and we're racking up the gate right now for just that. One guy that is ready for sure, well, I'm guessing at least, is James Stewart. In his career, he's won 21 of 28 motos. That's 75% of the races he's entered. Are you paying attention at home? Nine moto win streak he's on. Ten race win streak over the last two years. The guy is on fire. Unbelievable competitor, James. Hanging out, getting ready, always cool and calm. How are you feeling today? I feel great, you know, Cameron. I'm back at here at Unadilla. I had a great race last year, and, um, you know, I feel great in practice. You know, I'm just trying to go out there and have a little fun and, uh, you know, try to do the best I can. If I get a great start up right now, and I'll uh, see what happens then. You said two things I'm going to key on. Fun, I always see you riding the bike having a great time, scaring me sometimes when I'm doing the Suzuki Fast Lap. But you talked about last year a little bit. Chad Reed having a little bit more fun than maybe you should have. What was going on? Now, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I wanted to prove myself and everybody else that, you know, I could race. And I was, I was the man last year. Now, you know, I, I feel good this year. You know, I won four, off, four in a row right now. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just try to check it out and uh, get a great start and come out swinging. Thinking just about race wins or are we thinking championships still? Well, you know, I'm probably going to try to, you know, continue these moto streaks, you know, try to win some more motos, and uh, then we'll think about the championship after that. But uh, in the meantime, how do you feel out there, Cameron? I see you got a little busted up right now, and uh, how do you feel? Taking a little heat from James Stewart. It's all right. I, I got a little bit of a boo-boo and making fun of me. It's all right. He's going to steal my job someday. Thank God he's just a great motorcycle rider for now. Wow. You know, it's funny to hear the difference in their voices between <laughs> James Stewart and the three veterans, Langston, Hughes, and Brown. You know, it's like it's like hearing guys before a game saying, well, we got to play the Chicago Bulls, and yeah, we're going to let Michael Jordan get us 60 points. We're worried about the other guys. And the thing is, they'll go out and get us 60 points. No question about that. Cameron, a good sport there as he uh, got bucked off his local steed. Back to ride again, though. We're getting set for motor number one here at Unadilla. There is Grant Langston, number 111, and Brandon Jessman right next to him, number 26. Jessman also just coming off injury reserve, like James Stewart, although obviously not having the same impact that he's had. The last year, James Stewart and, and, my, and Brandon Jessman actually had a pretty good battle here, and Jessman passed it pretty well. There is the Suzuki starting grid. Number 259 is on the grid on his Kawasaki 
James Bubba Stewart, what will he do today? Hey, the way this track is set up, Todd, Stewart has looked unbelievable from the first time he hit the track as the board goes sideways. Can he carry it into the race? A lot of nerves on the line here at Unadilla. We are off and racing. This is round number seven from New York. Bubba Stewart does not get the whole shot, and we've got a huge amount of riders going to that corner. Oh, actually, he was able to get around Craig Anderson there. You see him going back and forth. Not a whole shot, but man, he's right there, and that does not bode well for the rest of the pack. Look at that. Right on the inside of Craig Anderson. Nice start for Stewart. Bubba Stewart makes it difficult to be a sportscaster because as soon as you say one thing, he does the other. He was buried, Davey, in the pack, and he just took a wide line, and next thing you know, he's passing Craig Anderson. Todd, we've seen this ever since he came back. He's got zero pressure on him. There's no championship at stake. He gets the luxury of going out and riding as fast as he wants. If he falls down, oh well, he loses a race. These other guys, Langston, Hughes, Brown, they might lose a championship. And you see Langston is up in the third, then Ivan Tedesco and Brock Sellers. So you got three Yamaha Troy riders in the top five. Yamaha feeling very good about that. Craig Anderson sitting second. Here's the start again. Bubba pushed way out to the outside. And as they come back in, Davey, he just makes it hook up. He just held it on longer, and everyone got a little too far outside here. And Anderson was able to come inside. And look, he just takes it easy, doesn't force the issue. He knows that he's going to pass it in the next corner. He sets himself up perfectly. Outside in, flat tracks it, gone. James Bubba Stewart does not get the whole shot, but he is our leader here in moto number one. Craig Anderson, number 109, the Aussie Phenom, plus the South African behind him, 111 on the KTM is Grant Langston. Anderson is the last guy to win a race since Stewart came back to the championship. He did it up at Southwick in the sand. And right here you see Langston, who has yet to win anything but a moto, but Langston sitting pretty for, for an attack on Brown for the championship. That shows you sort of the effect James Stewart has had. Well, here's my question. When you go into a race like Grant Langston, Hughes, Brown, and you're thinking about not winning, just keeping James Stewart off, it seems like you're already defeated. Yeah, of course, and, and I think that they are looking too far down the road. They're worried about what's going to happen when they get to Steel City or Kenworthy's, and they can't do that because if they keep looking over their shoulders, he's going to catch them. Mike Brown putting on a tremendous performance right now as he gets a move on. Number 52 is Ivan Tedesco on board the Yamaha. Here comes Brown, number three on the Kawasaki and he heads up a perfect line and dives inside Tedesco. I tell you, it's good to see this from Mike Brown, even though Tedesco's come back on the inside. It's good to see this from Browning, because more than anyone, he has really suffered and sort of stagnated his progress ever since Stewart came back. He had, you know, Southwick was just a bad day, wrecked on the start, but Bud's Creek and Redbud were terrible finishes for Brown, and with, with Rhino, Rhino getting hurt, and Langston did not win any motos, you'd think that he'd have a much bigger lead. Instead, he's losing real estate in the point standing. Tedesco almost goes over the falls right there, following too close to Brownie. He's able to salvage it. Brownie now starting to check out. Let's look at this one more time. Here's the battle. Brown on the right, Tedesco on the inside, number 52. Now, he's going to try the same thing right here that we saw Stewart do to Anderson, although Tedesco makes it easy on him by kind of fumbling on the inside. But so now Tedesco's lined up nicely to bring it back. And look at that, almost over the bars, hits one of those Unadilla bumps that have probably been there for about three decades. Nice save by Ivan Tedesco, and he almost got passed by Sorby right there, too. So the Yamaha's right now running very well, but they've got company coming up the back in the form of a green Kawasaki, number three, Mike Brown. Those are both a couple YZ250Fs that Brown's got to get up and pass. And, you know, they don't normally have that much of an advantage. And all things considered, the 125 class is pretty even. But it's going to be tough for Brown to pass these bikes because here at Unadola, that horsepower definitely shows on some of the hills as Sellers drops down the gravity cavity alongside his teammate. Craig Anderson on the outside, number 109 out of Australia. Brock Sellers, number 18, dicing inside. And all these guys are out to do one thing the near impossible, and that's catch James Bubba Stewart. Stewart's pretty much left the picture. You get a glimpse of Grant Langston, the second place rider, but Stewart is just out there having his own day, his own race. We've seen it ever since he came back. If he doesn't fall in the first turn, he's in a class by himself. And even if he does fall during the race, he usually has a 20-second plus lead. He can stop, get a cup of coffee, and get back up and go again. Now you see Ryan Hughes a little further back, a big battle behind him between Tedesco, Sorby, and Brandon Jessman. He's come up from a not very good start. 
uh, coming up along the back. Rhino, Ryan a little more aggressively, like you said at the top of the show, rode like an idiot at Red Bud, and he can't afford to do that if he's going to stay in this championship. Eric Sorby dropping back, trying to get back into the fray. We saw flashes of brilliance from him early in the season. This is Brandon Jessamyn, another one of those riders out of the Suzuki camp, coming out of the MASH hospital and trying to get his act back together. And a big victory for him on the 125 East Supercross season has not translated yet over with the injuries, Davey. I tell you what, he would have been my title favorite had he not gotten hurt just a few days before a turnaround happened to James Stewart, uh, you know, of course, Stewart's in the race, Stewart's a favorite. But whenever Stewart got hurt, it affected Jessamine more than anyone because I think he was in the catbird seat. No question about that. The 125 class is loaded with talent, which brings us to another point. James Bubba Stewart, who's running away with this, a lot of people want to push him to 250, Davey. Is that premature? Well, I tell you, I talked to Mark Johnson, the team Kawasaki manager, this morning about that. I asked him what would happen if they invited James Stewart to ride for Team USA at the Motocross Des Nations. And he said, we'd be honored, but we would decline because Bubba's not ready for a 250. I know there's about 30,000 people here at Unadilla would think otherwise, but uh, it's not going to happen right away. There's your running order. Back to Unadilla in a moment. AMA U.S. Motocross Championships are brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycle, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. And we are back to Unadilla. This is stop number seven of the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. Todd Harris, along with Davey Coombs and Cameron Steele, your leader in moto number one, the 125 class, is James Bubba Stewart. We shuffle back for the battle for fourth. Great battle back and forth between Anderson and Brown. Look at Brown coming up on the inside. About four times back and forth in that little section there. And look at that, coming right up behind him, Ryan Hughes. And you know, anytime Hughes gets around Brown, something is sure to happen. I guarantee Duke Finch is polishing up his spectacles right now in case those two do decide to get together and share dinner plans for tonight. Mike Brown now sits in fourth. Craig Anderson, 109 on the Yamaha, sits in fifth. And as Davey pointed out, here comes Ryan Hughes on board the KTM. Further up, further up the track, that's James Stewart. He has apparently gone down. The fans are cheering, but I think they're cheering that he's back up and riding, Davey. Looks like he's got a problem with his front brake. Yeah, you saw him pushing the front brake up, and he was trying to do it going up that hill, which means you can't get up that hill if you don't have your hand on your throttle. And check it out, the entire pack has now swallowed up James Stewart. What an unexpected turn of events. First mistake we've seen him make in a long, long time. Well, Lady Luck has shined on the rest of the 125 Classic. Grant Langston is there to seize it. It looks like James Bubba Stewart rolled the dice and came up snake eyes. And right now, Langston's saying Yahtzee. He's back in the running, sitting in second place. And the rest of the field, as Davey pointed out, is right there to pounce. What an unexpected. I just can't believe that happened. He was riding around by himself. We weren't even looking. And down he goes. And now it seems like everyone's picked up the pace. And there goes Hughes past Anderson. But check it out. You can see Stewart. It looks like his front brake is bent straight down. And that will affect him. On these hills here at Unadilla, you got to have both stoppers. Well, look at this. Grant Langston trying an inside line on James Bubba Stewart. And I can't believe what I'm saying, but he held the lead. He actually passed Bubba momentarily. And the planets have realigned and everything's back in order. James Stewart is back in first place. But Grant Langston, the tough South African on 111 at KTM, is making life a little bit more miserable for 259, James Stewart. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see Stewart doing any stopping and looking back like he did last time. Obviously, he's got some problems. His sleeve is all rolled up. The front brake's bent down, and Langston is all over him. As they come through pit row, what an amazing turn of events. Grant Langston is actually running with James Bubba Stewart, albeit minus. It looks like a front break. As you see, he went by J-Bone. His sign said, be strong, stay focused. And that's exactly what he's going to have to do. He's going to have to. I tell you what, if he can hold off Langston a little longer, you watch Stewart start looking forward again. And I think Langston senses that, and he senses the urgency of passing James Stewart right now, because if he gets away again, What's the chances of him making two mistakes? Grant Langston trying to close in on our leader, number 259, James Bubba Stewart. 
This is the closest anyone's been to him since they dropped the gate. For more on James Bubba Stewart, let's send it down to Cameron Steele in the pits. James, we were talking a few minutes ago, something happened. What, what went down on the course? Well, we know James went down. Yeah. They said he uh, slid up the face of a jump and hit a kicker and it like just pitched him off. But looks like the front brake is the way down. It's going to be tough to grab it from where it's at. So I'm sure all the downhills and charging the corner is going to be a little tougher now. But I know he's going to give it all he's got, that's for sure. Well, he's already passed back to the lead, so it must not be hindering him too much. But we know front brake is most of your stopping power on a dirt bike, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to pull a full AT handle out in case he wants to uh, fix it, but I know he'll uh, figure out how to ride without it, that's for sure. Todd, did you see how far outside Stewart went when they went down into the section they called the wall right there? He, I don't think he could stop. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, as Cameron pointed out, with J-Bone stopping downhill without a front brake. And look at this. Ryan Hughes goes past his good friend, Mike Brown. <laughs> and that's another unexpected turn of events. Obviously, Hughes feeling a lot better with that broken leg. Maybe that time off missing Kenworthy's helped him more than anyone. Well, the, the thought that J-Bone could even possibly have him come in and change it during the race is amazing. It definitely goes towards his rider's ability. But we have got a great race here. The folks at Unadilla are being treated to a real classic. I, I can't see Stewart stopping at this point. If he would have gotten passed by Lanks and some of these other guys, whoa! Sorby with a little love tap there with Craig Anderson. I wonder if Duke Finch saw that. But I, I really back up to Stewart. I doubt that he is going to pull into the pits. If he's going as fast as Langston is right now, I just can't see it happening. This was earlier when he went back and forth. You saw Langston come down the inside. Stewart went the outside, squared it up, comes right around the outside. Smart move by Stewart, keeping out front. And then this is Sorby when he comes inside on Anderson. I just don't think there's any need for this. There, look at that. That's, that's unnecessary roughness. If that's the NFL, Duke Finch is throwing a flag. Well, there's a lot of yellow flags out there to be thrown. Craig Anderson, lucky he didn't get T-boned right there as he came back onto the track. Meanwhile, it's Brock Sellers and Ryan Hughes now getting after it. And Ryan Hughes, I don't know if he smells blood in the water or what, but this may be his best opportunity to pick up a win. Well, I'll tell you what, this is just like Hangtown. If you go back to 1995, Hughes won that summer. The last national he won before Hangtown this year, Unadilla, 1995. I know he loves this track. And right here, just a nice pass on Brock Sellers. And now you get a three-way going. The Kawasaki's are teaming up on the Yamahas. Mike Brown, Eric Sorby, and Brock Sellers has got his hands full. He's going to be unfortunate if he lets the door open for one of them. And it looks like Sorby's going to get him on the outside. Here you see Jessamine sneaking up, too. And look at that. Another inside out. A good passing right there in that corner. I like the way that's set up. And look at Sorby. That's a nice move on Brock Sellers. See if he can hold it this time, too. Eric Sorby, number 917 on board the Kawasaki, originally from France. Brock Sellers, number 18 on the Yamaha. And here comes Mike Brown, number three on his Kawasaki. They are bunching up. And look at this. Ryan Hughes is being told to breathe and pour it on. Look at the freight train coming up behind him. There's a lot of talent there. It seems like the whole face of this race changed when James Stewart went down. Oh, and speaking of going down, Eric Sorby, the flying Frenchman, just goes into the Unadilla gravel, and he is, <laughs> he's got a fountain going there. Yeah, you see the radiator. You know what? I'll bet Craig Anderson was smiling when he went by right there. There's a thing called karma. Look at the passing one more time. Sorby goes on the inside, manages to pass both guys there in the last corner. Then Sellers got it back going down the straightaway, squares up, he's gonna see that all day. Finally gets around, so he's had a nice lap there, past two top guys, and then an unforced error. Comes out, front wheel washes, and it looks like it ruined his bike, too. It's got to be radiator fluid shooting out. So Eric Sorby could be done for at least motor number one. As Brock Sellers now starting to get pressure from the 125 East Supercross champion, Brandon Jessman, flying the colors for Suzuki. We'll take a break. We'll be back to Unadilla in just a moment. Welcome back to Unadilla. This is round number seven. 
the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Our leader in moto number one in the 125 class is James Bubba Stewart, but he is getting pressure from Grant Langston, who has now dropped back to just over four seconds behind. Like I said, Todd, if he didn't pass him again right there, he wasn't going to pass him back. Stewart just able to calm down. He is obviously riding at a disadvantage. Check it out right here. You can see how far down that brake lever is. Now, that wouldn't make a big difference if you were at, say, Southwick or Kenworthy. But here on these hills, it makes a huge difference. He just needed to adjust and learn how to ride with it. This is the battle for third. Ryan Hughes on board the KTM and a quick pass by Brandon Jessman. And Roger DeCosta has got a love what he's seen here. Very nice line. I didn't see that coming. Jessman going around the outside. You don't normally see that. The inside of that corner rutting up. And you know what? That's a left-handed corner, and it's hard for Ryan Hughes to put his foot down. Remember, that's the leg he broke five weeks ago. He comes in, he's not as aggressive as Ryan Hughes normally is. See how slow he gets right there? He's trying to keep his foot up. Adjustment just sweeps right around the outside. Cuts it right through the trees. Meanwhile, for Team ECC Suzuki and Steve Lampson, it looks like his day is done. We'll have to find out what's going on there. But Lampson's bike is definitely done for this moto. Back to our leader, this is James Bubba Stewart. Gave us all a scare earlier when he went down. He recouped, and he's basically riding that bike without a front brake. Now check it out, Langston himself is starting to get a little pressure from Brandon Jessamine. So it's Stewart, Langston, and Jessamine right now. And look at Brandon Jessamine. Look Langston. at that, Langston ran off the track. We're watching Jessamine shoot out of orbit. And Langston runs off the track all by himself. Jessamine passes another KTM rider, same spot almost. So Brandon Jessamine has made an incredible salt on the lead. Moving up, look at him one more time. There's Langston going through, and watch Jessamine coming to your picture. Look at that, he launched. I think he held the bike wide open or something. Something seemed to spook Langston, and he runs right off the track opens the door up and you know what this is the kind of mistake langston hughes and brown can't be making this guy is going to catch them if they don't get their collective acts together you can't do something like that and now you have the two guys who are out at the beginning of the year stewart and jessamine running one two and that's the way a lot of people thought it would have been here's james bow stewart coming around on the final lap meanwhile in the pitcher and pitcher mode we've got a great battle going for third there's the ktm rider Brandon Jessman has already checked out. He's in second, and Grant Langston's got his hands full. It's Langston and Hughes going for that last spot on the podium, and those are valuable points to these two guys. There you see Jessamine come down, and then right behind them, that's Langston holding on to third, and Hughes doing everything he can. You know that guy's not going to give up, but he might run out of time right here. Meanwhile, it's 259 minus the front brake, sporting the Fox Zebra stripes. James Bubba Stewart. Why would we want to push this kid in 250? He's having too much fun in 125, and he picks up the victory. When we come back, we'll talk to our winners, plus the Racer X Pit Pass after this. We are back to the Unadilla Valley Sports Center for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, and that is one worked over brake lever of James Bubba Stewart. J-Bone getting right on that as we take a look at our Honda official results. It's Stewart, Jessamine, Langston Hughes, and Brett Metcalf on the KTM rounding out the top five. Craig Anderson drops down to eight after a great ride by him. All in all, a very exciting 125 Moto number one. We'll sure to see more of the same in Moto number two. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron Steele. Well, James, it started out looking like it was going to be a runaway, but a crash. What happened? I don't know. Just uh, here at Unadilla, was one of those little goofy falls that slid up the face. I actually crashed pretty hard, and I skimmed my arm up a little bit. But, you know, I had to dig, dig down deep. I knew if I wanted anything to do with the championship, I had to, you know, knock out some motors. But, you know, I felt great out there. I didn't get tired or nothing. Just got a little arm pump because I couldn't use my front brakes. My handlebars were bent and everything. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good now. Just having fun out here. The hills here at Unadilla, it's got to be tough. No front brake. It's a huge amount of your stopping power. Yeah, you know, I'm getting killed in the screw use and, uh, you know, in the corners and stuff. I couldn't use the front brake, so I was going so slow. And that's using my specialty, so, you know, actually it was like three seconds, and I ended up slowing down in those guys' face after that happened. But, you know, I'm going to come back and uh, second burner and get another hole shot like I did and, and uh, come back out. Smashes up his handlebars and he's still smiling. Upcoming races include Millville, Minnesota, then Binghamton, New York, and Delmont, Pennsylvania on the 29th and 30th. Right now, let's check in with Cameron. Well, yeehaw, Brandon. That's got to feel good to get on the podium after being injured, coming back. 
Definitely is, man. After last weekend, I thought it was going to be a long time, but, you know, we got the bike working good, and I just came out here and did my best, and, you know, I came out with second, one spot away from what I want. <laughs> Obviously, charging huge out there. The jump out of the gravity cavity, <laughs> is that suggested? I mean, should you be doing that? Uh, well, I don't really suggest it, but I was just trying to make up as much time as I could anywhere possible, so if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have been getting it my all, so I just went for it. Great ride. What do you think, Moto2? You get the start? You can do battle with James? Uh, definitely get a little better gate pick second moto hopefully get a better start and uh, go up and run with him well grand third place in moto number one we talked about the points championship earlier you want the points and putting some on mike brown today a solid performance yeah you know them right now that's the plan just to uh like i said i just want to be on the podium each and every race and gain points and i did i did just that right there and and you know, i don't know where brownie finished but i think the points are pretty close now and uh you know, Bubba started pulling away, and he fell, and I saw him, and, you know, I charged for a while, and I caught up to him, and, you know, I passed him a couple of times, and we had a good little battle there, and uh, and then towards the end, something I think something went off in my rear shock, because it lost all its dampening, and I was hopping all over the place, so uh, I was struggling towards the end there, so I ended up slowing down a little, and uh, made a mistake mistake coming to one of these turns i overshot the turn and brandon was able to get around me but you know third place i beat the guys who are right behind me in the championship so that's that's what matters right now nice job we'll see how moto 2 goes Thanks. all right thank you cameron there's kelly smith hydrating he'll be jumping over to kawasaki next all right, thank you very much, Cameron. As we take a look at the Suzuki starting grid, there's James Stewart, Brandon Jessman, Grant Langston, and Ryan Hughes all getting great choices at the starting line. And, Davey, as we've seen, the start is critical. You don't want to be lined up on the outside. That's what Brandon Jessman was talking about. He had to come out of the morning qualifiers because he's not in the top ten. But this time he got a good spot. He lined up on the inside. We'll see how he does. 30 board is sideways. This is moto number two from Unadilla. James Stewart wins moto number one, but there is a championship battle on the line, and we're off and racing. And it looks like it's that four-stroke again. It looks like Craig Anderson, and it is. And Kelly Smith, a couple YZ250S, and there's Jessman in third. So Craig Anderson, the rider from Australia, number 109, your leader once again. This happened in moto number one, but James Stewart was quick to pick him up. And I don't even see Stewart in the fray. Oh, and Jessamine just went down on the inside. I Looks like he caught a hay bale. Terrible mistake. Brandon had the start he wanted. Look, he was ahead of Stewart. We don't even see Stewart yet. And Brandon Jessamine fell down. Unbelievable. Well, Craig Anderson starting to distance himself. Just a little bit of slight bubble there. And look at this. The KTM riders are in mass at the front of the pack. It's Ryan Hughes in second. Then you have Smith, Metcalf, and Langston. And there you see Stewart, ninth place. Not as good a start as he got in the first moto, but knowing James Stewart, that's not bad either. Yeah, I was going to say, this is nothing. We saw him come from dead last before in the matter of a lap or two. He should have this thing cleaned up, oh, in two, two quarters maybe, half a lap. James Bubba Stewart in ninth. Make it eighth. Make it seventh. Oh, we can go for sixth. Unbelievable, look at this kid move. And he is on a 125cc motorcycle. Look at that. He passed three guys in one sentence, Todd. Let's look at the start one more time. Brown and Stewart neck and neck, and they just get squeezed out. Yeah, he got pinched off there. You saw it hurt Mike Brown, too. And you see those YZ250S out front. They're always out front. And then you see Metcalf, and that's Hughes come along the outside look at that a couple guys go in the banners and right there is eric sorby and he's starting out where he left off in that first moto so eric sorby way in the back of the pack and watch the movement from 259 just comes up through the pack has no problems picking up one two three spots at a time unbelievable he took that outside line right away from metcalf and just blasted by him. Or rather i think that was boniface but well one of those ktms well, the KTM riders are definitely all stocked up in the top 10, but number 259 looks like he's got that front brake lever fixed because he is on the rivet. Right around the outside of Kelly. So, you know, that's the thing that James Stewart does, just like Jeremy McGrath did in Supercross. He passes guys wherever he finds them. He doesn't waste a lot of time setting them. Whoa, and Langston. Got that. Close. Looks like he slid out there. Obviously, they've watered the track in between motos, and man, he's lucky that Kelly Smith didn't torpedo him right there. Grant Langston gets a face full of roost for that effort. Look at it one more time. Look how, 
look how tight they're laying it over. Looks like the back wheel just washed out on him. Yeah, Hughes was on the outside. Hughes had the burn. He went on the inside, and look at that. Nice move by Langston to hold the clutch in, have the fortitude to keep that bike running, and he gets back up and loses hardly any time. And back to the other side of the track, and Stewart just keeps going forward. Uh, this is a great battle. Hughes and Stewart, two of the preeminent riders in the 125 class. Ryan Hughes is not a guy that's going to let James Stewart just waltz past him. Uh, well, maybe he is. Yeah, I don't think he had much of a choice in that. Stewart had a better line there. I mean, there's lines all over this track, but Stewart's been doing that all day, going on the outside, sweeping back in. And look at this, right up on Anderson. You're right. It did, oh, actually, you're wrong. It didn't take two and a half laps. He took one and a half laps, Todd. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what we just talking about, James Stewart being in ninth place, and now your new leader, number 259, James Bubba Stewart. Unbelievable. Anderson made a mistake, went a little off the track, but you know what? Stewart was going by anyway. And now you see Hughes come up. Watch this. Goes around the outside. Anderson gets inside there. It looks like he's doing okay, but all of a sudden, foot comes off into the banners. He's slowing down. Stewart's going forward. And that's your pass for the lead. Unbelievable. Craig Anderson right now is probably saying, Crikey, mate, I got the whole shot. Craig Anderson slides the second, James Bubba Stewart first. It looks like Ryan Hughes is trying to pick up some more points. Here comes Hughes down on the inside. You know, and Anderson, oh. it's great, great starts right there. Hughes just a little more aggressive, made the pass, but Anderson's like the best starter I think I've seen in a long time. Craig Anderson, a tremendous rider on board the Yamaha number 109 out of Australia. Ryan Hughes, 105 on the KTM, now moves into second place. That is a full commitment pass he made right there. They see Brock Sellers, Yamaha Troy rider, went to the starting gate, decided not to enter, not feeling very well, not well enough to ride the second moto here at Unadilla. Performance first. It's in the DNA of Honda. It's why the CR250R has won more races than any bike in Supercross history. Performance first. It's in Ricky Carmichael's DNA. And it's why he keeps on making Supercross history. Ricky Carmichael and the CR250R, AMA Supercross champions, again. The first factory rider to be paid to raise Gary Jones accomplished a lot during his brief AMA motocross career. A speedway dirt tracker turned motocrosser, Jones won the 1971 Interamp 250 title, then opened the AMA history books by winning the first three 250 motocross titles from 1972 to 1974. He spread the number one plates around by winning each championship on three separate bikes. In 1975, with the help of Frank Cooper and Gary's dad, Don, this champion created and raced his own motorcycle. While the Amex motocross bike didn't win any motocross titles, it did spark a future hobby. Gary retired from the Nationals in 1977, and today this motorcycle racing enthusiast works in special projects for White Brothers. Jones' projects have included building some of the first super motard bikes and short track flat trackers for Nicky Hayden. This 1971 Baja 500 winner is still a very active racer that enjoys many forms of his passion. When not at work or play, Gary enjoys riding horses and keeping up with his very active family. Wife Renee, sons Gregory and Justin, and daughter Brianna all race. Their craving for competition has to be a gene passed on from the AMA's very first 250 champion. And back to Unadilla, this is stop number seven. Our leader right now is James Bubba Stewart, but there is a championship title on the line, Davey, and it's amazing how everyone is jockeying for position. Well, they have to, every point counts. It's still a long way away, and that's why I was talking to the first motor, Todd. These guys gotta keep looking forward and not behind them at Stewart. And right there, you see Langston able to pass Craig Anderson, but now he's got his teammate, Ryan Hughes, in front of him, and that is one of the guys that he's racing against, Mike Brown. It's also coming up, so every point counts, every position counts, every lap counts right now in this championship. Grant Langston is in third. Meanwhile, battle for six continues, and it is Mike Brown, number three, on the Kawasaki, trying to get an outside run to move up. Here is a guy, Davey, who's in desperate need of a podium finish. He sure is. He's got to get moving forward. Right there, he made a nice, aggressive pass on Kelly Smith, didn't mess around with him. You know, Mike Brown's known to bang people here and there, but right there, 
he's shown that maybe he's starting to focus ahead of him a little more. Comes around the outside, and you know, this is just one of those courage lines. He just held it on longer, came around the outside, held it off the jump, kept it down low, a little bit of super cross there. And I don't think Kelly Smith was in a position to really defend himself, and I don't think he's gonna get in the way anyway. He knows these guys are out there going for a championship. So right now it's the KTMs that are sitting two and three with Ryan Hughes in second and Grant Langston in third. Meanwhile, your leader is James Bubba Stewart. Mike Brown's starting to make a little noise. Look how fast he's caught up to Craig Anderson, number 109 on the Yamaha. Yeah, and don't forget, there's actually three KTMs up there. Very quietly, Brett Medcap, our, our fifth place finisher in the first moto, has also moved up. So he's up there with his teammates, Hughes and Langston. And in order for, for Mike Brown to get close to Stewart, he's gonna have to pass all those guys. An amazing run by Mike Brown. He is trying to get up in the top five position. If he gets around Craig Anderson, he'll do that. Ahead of him, a trio of KTM riders, and we've got a great moto here. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele down in the pits. Well, you told me about the shock before the motor. Do you think it's working? Is the bike working better for Brownie? Well, Cameron, to be honest with you, we did change the shock and all that, but I don't think it's the shock. I think it's Mark Brown. He's really focused right now. He's put his head down, and he's riding like Mark Brown. I like that. Confidence. So do I. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what he needs, Davey. He needs to ride with more confidence. He can run with these guys. We've seen it before. He's just got to go out and do it now. Yeah, check it out. This is a fratricidal battle between the three Red Bull KTMs. Langston and Hughes, of course, your title contenders. But look at this. Metcalf is being very aggressive. He does not want to let these guys get away. And I, right now, when the, there you see Langston on the inside. And Hughes is not going to like that one bit. But Metcalf. Ryan right there with those guys, the three of them in the air at the same time off Gravity Cavity, and Metcalf did the same thing Jessamine was doing. He out-jumped the guy he was trying to pass. An amazing turn of events for KTM. They went from having no healthy riders, it seemed like, during Supercross season, to now they've got three great riders in the 125 class. Right here, Langston comes down the inside. Look at that. Almost makes contact. Yeah, I see it again. That's a pretty clean pass, but doesn't matter. Hughes isn't going to like that. And then Metcalf just full on out jumps him. Hughes looks over. He's like, where in the world did that guy come from? They got a South African, an Australian, or New Zealander. I don't know where Metcalf's from. Starting to get confused. And Rhino, and everyone knows Rhino's from SoCal. No question about that. And for the record, Brett Metcalf is an Aussie. So we've got the Southern Hemisphere boys working their teammate over, and he's saying, fellas, come on, we're in a championship hunt here. And now you've got the guy from Tennessee, Mike Brown, and it looks like he's going to get around Hughes. Hughes having a bad lap there. And right there, that's the same pass that Jessamine made on him. Hughes goes inside out on, or rather, Brown goes inside on Hughes and makes the pass in that fast, long section across the valley. And Duke Finch breathes a sigh of relief. Those two get together, and nothing happens. He's thinking, let's just keep it that way, boys. Now Metcalf, look at this. Red Metcalf, I think this is what KTM had in mind for him. Look at that, great pass. This is what they had in mind for him when they imported him over for Supercross, but he ended up crashing more, and now Langston goes back on the inside. We've seen that all day long. You can pass it on the inside, but then you give up the inside in the next corner. Langston back into second, and now Metcalf tries to out-jump him again, and he does the same thing, so Metcalf does the same. And then Langston gets to wow. It's hard to keep up with these guys. What are they feeding these boys down in the Southern Hemisphere? The young man from South Australia, Metcalf, number 123, is really working it with his 111 teammate. Meanwhile, James Stewart, now that all his equipment's working just fine, uh, doesn't seem to have as much problems anymore. <laughs> well, at least we got a little drama in the first moment. though. We'll wrap things up from Unadilla after this short break. We are back to Unadilla. That is James Stewart Sr. And he's got to be happy with what he's seen here in the second moto. His son is all but checked out, Davey. Yeah, and, and again, he, he was able to keep it up. I was more impressed with the first moto, to be honest with you. Guy riding around with one break on these hills. Pretty impressive stuff. And Stewart going to keep those very narrow, distant championship hopes alive. But that first moto, that was fantastic. James Bubba Stewart has come here on a mission. He has done exactly what he set out to do. That is win both motos and claim the overall. Well, he hasn't won the second moto yet, but barring any major accident, now he has. James Bubba Stewart has claimed the overall, and that has got to play on the psyche of the rest of the three who are in the hunt for the title. Langston, Hughes, and Brown have got to start thinking now as we take a look at the Honda official results. It's Stewart, Langston, Brown, Hughes, and Brett Metcalf again in fifth. 
Looks like Metcalf slowed down and let his teammate Hughes bun. You know what? You had Langston Brown and Hughes one, two, and three, or rather two, three, and four. That's where they needed to be. Let's check in with Cameron. Well, James Stewart continuing to stomp all comers. Today, earning his 22nd and 23rd moto victories. I believe your 13th overall victory, 10th in a row, James. It's just awesome to watch you ride. You feeling this thing? Yeah, you know, I feel great out there, you know. Actually, that moto, I just kind of rode. I wasn't even really riding hard, and, uh, you know, I figured the harder you ride on this track, the worse it is. So, you know, I'm kind of bummed. I was, you know, trying to hope to win pretty good. But, you know, they got it next week. Um, we're going to, I think it's Watch you go. It's one of those other tracks that you got to kind of ride smooth, but, you know, I feel great and everything. My Kawasaki got me a pretty decent start, and, uh, you know, I can't thank everybody enough. You know, everybody, they've been doing a great job and everything, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go next week. I'm not even tired. Let's throw a third one in here. <laughs> throw a third one. Well, you can jump on a 250, maybe race the other guys later in the day, but really, I mean, a 20-second win or somewhere in the 20 seconds, you've had 30 seconds, you've had 40-second wins. None of it really matters as, bad, as long as you win, but the points championship, I know we keep talking about it, but you're perfect so far since you've been back. You leave 150 points now. You're catching these guys, you know, relatively easily, so to speak. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Grant, Grant's round really consistent right now. And Mike, um, you know, Rhino rode a good race too, but. You know, like I said, like it's like one of those things, you know, just kind of hoping and hoping to get some points. But, you know, we'll see. But, you know, I just can't wait to go back the next week at Washougal and, uh, you know, represent there. You know, got to I got to thank everybody, you know, my mom and dad, you know, Kawasaki, you know, Shannon, Tony, you know, Kirsten, everybody, you know, everybody's doing a great job. And uh, it's the little people that count. And my bus driver, Todd Hicks, you know, he fixed me mad peanut butter and jellies. So. <laughs> awesome job, James. We'll see you next week at Washougal. Thanks, Cameron. So the Peanut butter and jellies are the secrets. We take a look at the Honda overall results. It's Stewart going one and one. Then Langston Hughes, Brown, and Metcalf, your top five on the day. Let's go back down to Cameron, who's with Grant Langston. Were you aware of what Mike Brown was doing? I mean, at the end of the moto, he was coming hard. Were you thinking he might be able to catch you, or were you just kind of pacing yourself? I'm one of those guys, I'm always, think I'm doing my best, and then when someone catches me, it's like a, a red flag to a bull. I find two seconds, and off I go. So It's tough to say I'm always trying, but I don't know. Sometimes I find that extra speed. Don't challenge the Zulu warrior, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it, I guess. Yeah. Well, Rhino, a great ride today on the gas. I talked to you earlier, you said you're a little up and down, maybe your leg, maybe a little stamina. Yeah, you know, I just haven't been able to ride as much as I've wanted to. The days I ride, I only ride probably once, twice a week, and it's only one moto. And, you know, this whole week, was my, the leg, my ankle was really sore, and then I started taking some Vioxx this weekend, and it made it quite a bit better. So I had to regain my confidence from the first practice to now. But uh, then it's just like one thing after another. I got food poisoning Thursday. Day, and I'm um, just you know I'm just not in riding shape right now and I lost a lot of fitness you know in the last six weeks but uh, you know we got uh, another race and some weeks off and uh, I think uh, I should be able to get back to where I was and uh, you know yeah I mean Metcalf had to pull over but that's you know sometimes you gotta play team orders and that's that's the way it goes you know he he outrode me he deserves to beat me but uh, you know, we had six races to get to where we're at, and um, right now I have a chance for the championship, and that's the way it works. So we'll see how it goes down in Washougal. Thank you very much, Cameron, as we take a look at the points standing, and only one point separating Mike Brown and Grant Langston. Meanwhile, Stewart continues his assault on the leaders. Davey, what a great day of racing. It sure was. And you know what? Stewart showed that he could still learn something. Today he learned that whole slow down to go faster, let the race come to him. First moto had a problem, second moto slowed it down, actually won by more. On behalf of my colleague, Davey Coombs and Cameron Steele, I'm Todd Harris saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.